Hey there, welcome to day two of our fifth Get Up and Go Challenge. This is Get Up and Go Challenge, our free 30-day challenge to get up and go to handle challenges and changes in ways that you would maybe never imagined before, but to make sure and guarantee that you're better off after any change or challenge that you experience than before. Today we're going to talk about WIIFU. And you may have already heard of everybody's favorite radio station being WIIFM, What's In It For Me?, and this is a little bit of a twist on that because each and every one of us don't ask, well, we do ask what's in it for me, but I want to talk about what's in it for you. What possibly could be in it for you to participate in challenges and specifically to participate in this challenge. And then we're going to share for our action item today, the number one reason that you want to participate in this challenge, that you're choosing to participate in this challenge. The one thing you want to get out of it, the one reason that motivates you most, that drives you the most. Because it doesn't matter why I do the challenge, it's important to me, but it's not necessarily important to you. So what's in it for you? What are some of the reasons that we do challenges? Why do I love challenges? I'll share the reasons I love challenges and maybe this will get you thinking about why you want to participate or have participated in challenges. Yesterday we talked about how many challenges we've actually experienced. And I figured that at my 60 plus year point, I have literally personally experienced at least a quarter of a million challenges. I think challenges range from the little things that we do to the big things that we do. And I don't know, and if changes and challenges and decisions are all uh, considered challenges, then we've all probably faced millions of challenges in our life. You know, do I go right? Do I go left? Do I go up? Do I go down? Um, all these decision points and challenges we're faced with. And some of us have had bigger, broader, harder challenges than others. Now, a challenge is always defined by us, right? How severe it is or how strong it is or how big a deal it is, is defined by us. And I have found that when I'm in a challenge or just hit with a change or challenge, I think it's a lot bigger deal than when I'm looking at it after the fact. Here's an example. I had a sudden cardiac arrest and died. And when that happened and when I woke up, I thought that was a really, really big deal. And it literally took me at least a year or two to process that event, process what the heck had happened to me, how could this have happened to me, what was, and more importantly, not understanding 100% why and what and how it had happened, but what I was going to do about it to make sure that it didn't happen and that I could be here 10 years later still talking to you. Because the statistics of someone that has a sudden cardiac arrest are very, very grim. Uh, very few people survive and, and come out of that event uh, with all their faculties in order, I mean, to be able to put two sentences together, their memories intact, things like that. And for me, for the most part, my kids would say otherwise, but I have got all of my marbles for the most part following that event. Uh, and so that most people would consider that a huge challenge. Me, as I look, and I probably did when I was going through it, but as I look back on it, it's actually been one of the best things that ever happened to me. One of the best gifts of my, my life, since I survived it, of course, to still be here and able to share things and, and talk about topics and, and help other people get through challenges and things that they face. So how we define challenges, how big a deal they are to us, is up to us to decide and notice that it will change for you over time. If you don't believe me, think back about some of your past challenges and how do you feel about them now and then think about how you felt about them before. Our tool today is going to help us do exactly that. So what are some reasons to like challenges? What do challenges do for us? Challenges are an opportunity to uh, proactively handle change, right? Challenges are just change. So how do we handle change? Challenges create change, they create uh, growth, they create progress if we let them, they create results, certainly sometimes bad results, sometimes good, but there's always a result of a challenge or change that we're impacted by. They, they cause us to take action and move in the direction that we wanna go, hopefully. Uh, they create course corrections. Sometimes we find, I don't know about you, but sometimes I've found that I've made choices and decisions that put me on the wrong trail, the wrong path. I was one of those people that changed my major in college like 12 times. I couldn't make up my mind and I kept changing my mind and course correction and course correcting. And by the time I graduated from college, I, I actually had three degrees. Instead of just one and a minor, I had three actual full-fledged degrees, which was cool. I like learning. I still love learning. Uh, but it allows us to align with what it is that we really want, what we value, our true path, and what's important for us. Challenges and changes allow us to 
be ourselves. They, they remind us of who we are and um, that we're all actually incredible, awesome, resilient, creative, smart, you know, resourceful human beings and that we have the ability to pivot and change and course correct and go after what it is that we want. We have the, they allow us to be the example of how we want to show up in the world for the others, how we want to be a role model for other people, whether it's the people that we interact with, our friends and family, our children, uh, challenges and overcoming them and how we handle them is the best example for others. It allows us to quickly test and tweak and try out different ideas, different things, different methodologies, different projects, different careers, different everything. Challenges are a great way to acquire a skill really, really quickly. Uh, they're the fastest, easiest way to get from A to Z, A to B, A to whatever, from where you are now to what you want, to whatever result you want. Challenges are the fastest way to do that and the easiest way to do that, believe it or not, in any area or aspect of your life. And we'll talk about all the, the areas and aspects of your life throughout the challenge, not just our careers, not just financial, not just our jobs, not just our mindset, not just our spirituality, but we'll touch on all and we will install a framework that allows us to deal with them in, in the way that's best for us to guarantee we have better results after any change or challenge than before. So what's our tool today? Our tool today is something called a set point. Think of your thermostat in your house, right? You can hear my furnace running because it's winter in Wisconsin. We set our thermostat to a certain temperature and when the temperature drops below that, temp that particular setting, our furnace kicks on and it blows warm air in the house. Works the same way, only in the reverse with cooling for air conditioning if you happen to be in a warm climate. So think of our set point as our own thermostat, our own furnace. And we all have that. We all have set points for pretty much everything in our lives. We have a love set point. We have a financial set point. We have a change and challenge set point. Now I like to give my set point. I like to know where I am. I'm a, I'm a, a nerdy engineer, so I like to put numbers and objective measures to things whenever possible. So one of the early times when I did this particular challenge, I started to ask myself, all right, how, how good am I about challenges? How resistant to challenges and changes am I uh, it, it, as I go into this? And I thought that a good one to look at for almost all of us, it's something we pretty much all have in common right now, is how I felt and how resistant I was to change and challenges when COVID-19 hit. Now, if I rate this on a scale of one to 10, which is what I do, um, I, I'm always measuring things for myself. So on a scale of one to 10, one being easy peasy, no resistance, I just go with the flow. 10 being, I have tons of horrible resistance. I'm gonna push against this change and this challenge no matter what. I'm gonna go kicking and screaming and fighting into the brave new world or whatever you wanna call it. So when COVID first hit, I gave myself about a seven because I was still pretty resistant, but I didn't give myself an, an, a nine or a 10, even though in some areas I felt really, really resistant. But I have, over the last couple of years, as I personally am legally blind, so as I've lost my vision, I've had to change and, and adjust to a lot of things personally over the last two years. So for me, when COVID hit, I kind of felt selfishly like other people were just catching up with me. And so I only had about a seven resistance to having to pivot and change all my ways again, mainly because I was a little resentful that I've been changing so much already. <laughs> now, as I, and so that was my set point when I first started, get up and go challenge one, I would say definitely a seven for being pretty resistant. I mean, I was pushing back. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was horrible and whining and bitching and moaning and complaining like we human beings sometimes do. And now as I'm heading into get up and go challenge five, I say my resistance is a four, maybe a four, probably even a little less, but I always like to have continuous room to grow. So I'd say there are still things that upset me and I push back on with respect to COVID restrictions and things. Think Thanksgiving and holidays. When people are telling us how we can celebrate our holidays and whether we can go to, to service and church or not, that, that sort of irritates me. So for the fun of it today, as we go into this new challenge, what is your personal thermostat, your personal set point. What would you give yourself for a number? And you don't have to share it in the comments below. Today, we're just gonna share what is the number one, what's in it for you. Uh, 
aspect. What's in it for you to do this challenge, to participate in this challenge? Because I want to know, because that helps me tailor the information to make sure that you get your needs met. I already know that my number one thing is I'm creating a summit for next year, a challenge summit. So during this time period, this month, I'm focusing on putting all the pieces in, the, in place to create that particular challenge summit early next year. Uh, so there, I guess I shared my homework even though I haven't written it on the, the post yet. Uh, but today, what's your set point? Again, I'm, I'm going into this one with about a four, probably because I'm a little resistant to putting together the, the summit for the challenge, but I'm not resistant to any of the information that we're gonna talk about and share. That would be about a one, because I'm, I'm ready to spit it out and, and flow and share. So, what's in it for you? What reason for the challenge? Just for the fun of it, figure out your set point, and I will be with you tomorrow with our next little block in our Get Up and Go Challenge. Have an amazing day. Any questions, hit me up below.